Marley was the most revolutionary music star the world has ever seen. He was a political figure, he was a religious figure. They said it was cancer that killed him. But not anymore. The strange conspiracy theory. Bob Marley was a victim of the CIA's covert assassination program. In the many years that I've studied conspiracy theories, I've heard uh, many, many times that people are being assassinated by means of induced cancer. Who killed Bob Marley? This is Strange Universe, the phenomenal daily news magazine. Now, Emmett Miller. Bob Marley sure made some cool music, and he sure preached some fiery rhetoric. In his prime, he was more dangerous than Muhammad Ali, a pop star and a third world hero. He died before his time. They said it was cancer. But now the conspiracy theorists have risen again. Stephen Ivory follows the question, who killed Bob Marley? Bob Marley was the most powerful political black man alive in the 1970s. He was more than the king of reggae. Bob Marley's music made him a walking political weapon. It also made him a marked man. It's on the record that Bob Marley survived one assassination attempt. But now, people are saying that his death from cancer was an assassination as well. Bob Marley was in actuality a target of the Central Intelligence Agency because Bob Marley was at the forefront of a very broad-based social movement. And Bob Marley's music was about life and death. It was about politics. It was about spirituality. It was about overthrowing the pernicious system. So naturally, they wanted him dead. In nearly a decade of, of my research in conspiracy theories, I've heard many times the theory that people are being assassinated by induced cancers. To understand the strange circumstances of Bob Marley's death, we must go back to where his life began. To Trenchtown, the violent and politically charged ghetto in Kingston, Jamaica, where Bob Marley formed a singing group called the Wailers. I mean, Bob's music was about life and death. It was about salvation and hope. Uh, that was Bob Marley. Roger Steffens is one of the world's foremost authorities on Bob Marley. He transcended popular music. He was a political figure. He was a religious figure. He is someone whose words have brought solace to folks all over the world. Bob Marley was also a Rastafarian, a renegade philosophy that embraced the African leader Haile Selassie as a living God and marijuana as a sacrament. The combination of music, belief, his lion's mane of hair, and the ever-present smoke turned him into a living legend. But as his fame grew around the world, Bob Marley found political enemies at home. In December 1976, gunmen stormed into his house, shooting. The CIA was vitally interested in everything he did. They kept files on him. It is fairly certain that they were behind the shooting attempt on his life in 1976. Bob Marley survived. He got even bigger. The assassination attempt on Bob's life on December 3rd, 76, catapulted Bob into a stratosphere of almost martyrdom. He, he went from being just a dreadlocked, ganja-smoking pop star into a mythic figure. But it was a seemingly minor event that changed the course of Bob Marley's life. It happened while he was on tour in France during a pickup game of soccer. A player stepped on Bob Marley's toe. He was carried from the field, and a French doctor gave him an injection. Bob Marley was soon diagnosed with cancer of that toe, the cancer that would kill him. Some speculate that Bob Marley had been injected with cancer or something else that mimicked its effects. So did the CIA kill Bob Marley? Well, I know they tried to. I think they wanted to see him dead. Roger Steffens can't bring himself to believe it was a hit, but others can. Kiti Obi Awadu is known as the Conscious Rasta, 
For years, he's been distributing his writings and videos of conspiracy theories, including this one. It seems to be, without a shadow of a doubt, that yes, they had targeted Bob Marley for neutralization, and this would be an, a prime vehicle for doing that. Jonathan Vanken is our conspiracy expert. He says the Marley theory is not unusual. Uh, Jack Ruby, the killer of Lee Harvey Oswald, himself felt that he had been injected with cancer cells. Uh, William Casey, the director of the CIA, died of a brain tumor right in the middle of the Iran-Contra hearings. The days in which Bob Marley's condition worsened are also shrouded in mystery. For a time, he checked into the same cancer clinic in Mexico, where actor Steve McQueen was treated. Later, he was flown to an experimental clinic in Germany, run by a man named Joseph Issels. What they did not know at the time was that Joseph Issels was an ex-Nazi SS doctor. Bob Marley was treated with a controversial drug called CH-23. He then flew to Miami to visit his mother. He died shortly afterwards, on May 11, 1981. He was only 36. The theory that Bob Marley was the victim of a medical assassination might have died as well. But then, six years later, former whaler Peter Tosh was murdered during a robbery that many believe was another political assassination. The public figures who stood against the system, people like Malcolm X, people like Peter Tosh, people like Bob Marley and Martin Luther King, represented the most visible threat to the status quo. If you ask a doctor, he'll tell you it's not possible that Bob Marley was assassinated. You can't transmit cancer via a shot, so it's uh, highly, highly unlikely that Bob received cancer from a shot. But if you ask one who's steeped in the conspiracy world, they'll tell you differently. Even Roger Steffens, the Bob Marley expert, admits that if somebody killed Bob Marley to quiet a political threat, they achieved their aim. The biggest star in Bob's aftermath was Yellow Man, a salacious, foul-mouthed rapper. And that was the music they promoted in the aftermath of Bob's death, and we've never recovered from it since. So, in, in effect, his death accomplished a great deal of what the CIA was trying to do, which was to prevent the music from being a political vehicle. Bob's children carry on his musical tradition. They're Ziggy, Stephen, and most recently, Julian and Damien. <laughs> 